do 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 hey guys okay we're going with maddie and tay because i like them so much <laughs> Got the, you guys put you over here. You guys are probably all spending time with your families today, which is great. Always spend time with family. But I'm just putting baits together. So, little finesse baits. Remember these? So, we're just putting O rings on them, hooks, package them up. And, uh, Getting ready for spring sales. These little split rings are really tiny. So, but I hope everybody's enjoying their day with uh, their families. Everybody's got the day off, which I think is great. And if you don't, bummer. Because everybody should have today off. At least one day a year, just spend time with family. Remember what's important. So, I did a uh, artful piece this morning, uh, and uh, posted on my blog. I put that in the bottom. But it's not really about fishing. You know, my blog is about PTSD and depression. But if any of you want to look at it, see what's in my mind, <laughs> still in ya! <laughs> How you doing, buddy? My lake's not even close to frozen enough. So... Make baits. Oh, and next week, a week from today, I'll be on vacation. Going to Newport, Oregon. Never seen the Oregon coast, so it'll be a first. Got a little aquarium. It's got a little zoo. It's got a lighthouse, beach, a big marina. And we're right on the marina. I mean, we're right on the water in the place that we rented. So it's going to be really, 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 really nice. Um, looking forward to it. So I did make some baits for it. These aren't them. These are finesse baits for spring fishing. So a little finesse bait there. Sort of color shift to it. And, um, but yeah, this one right here. Painted this for the, for my little fishing trip. It's a jointed jerkbait. Beautiful. Color shifting yellow green up on the bot top and then copper head body to a pearlescent belly. Boy, it looks really good. And then this one, although it'll probably look see-through on here. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah. It's actually bright yellow and uh, it flo it glows in the dark. <laughs> Book is doing good, I think, you know. I mean, a couple people bought it. <laughs> Which is always nice. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be a bestseller. Um, but, a eh, little package. A little package. So, but yeah. Um, I think two people. <laughs> Let me look. I'll look. Let's see. Reports. Two. <laughs> so, yeah, two people. That's nice. <laughs> Not going to get rich, are you? I mean, consider how many people publish books and write books. There's only a handful that ever become best-selling authors. But it's a... Uh, yeah, there it is. Um, I mean, I got my author copies. So 
So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. You know, a lot of times I write for me. Sort of a catharsis. Good for me, good for whoever else. I think the book is really nice. So I think even an experienced fisherman would actually learn something from the book. And it's kind of like a journal too, so kind of neat. Um, but like I said, I, I think I think even an experienced fisherman would learn something, even when it's one or two things in the book. And if you're a spinning real guy, you're definitely going to learn something about bait casters. Um, find the hole on these things. Really little. When you do finesse baits, I mean, it's really little. <laughs> These are little. It's hard to do the split ring and put a hook on the split ring without poking your finger with the hook. But you know, working on it. I had to order more hardware hooks and stuff. So I'll probably finish a lot of this stuff after my vacation when it comes in. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> hey, fishing and fun. I wish you and yours the best today. And uh, hopefully there's not a whole lot of arguments at the around the tree and stuff like that. Watch a little football, I guess. <laughs> There's football on today. I just stopped watching football when it became, you know, a few years ago when it became so political, you know. And then I just never got back into it. So it broke the routine um, of watching football. And uh, so these little things, these little blister packs. And then you got, you just stick a business card behind it. And you've got yourself. Where are you at, babe? Oh, look, it's Evie. Evie's my black and white. And she seldom comes down here. Come here. She doesn't like being picked up. Oh, oh, yeah, let me unwind my electric blanket. Because it's cold down here. You know, my viewers have never seen you. This is my black and white. Now, Evie was a feral kitten. And we named her Eve. Because she her the litter was up in the eaves of a store I, I managed. And all the customers and I, we sort of broke apart the litter. And took, took one each. And Eve, it took six months for me to tame Evie. Huh, you were a mean cat. You rip right through my leather gloves and everything. You were mean. Now she's about, what are you, 12 years old? Something like that? Yeah, so, really cool cat. She sleeps with me every night. Right, right along my left side, don't you? <laughs> you guys have met Bello. This is Eve. She's a good cat. She's mine. She's been very friendly lately to the rest of the family. So yeah, she's been in really good spirits lately. Stay away from the hooks. Well, no, no, no. I'm going to keep you away from those hooks. You can't get up on the table. <laughs> Bello got a hook in his mouth once. You can't get up there. There's hooks up there, babe. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But 
<laughs> Shouldn't have let her do that. Too many little hooks up there. Those are tens. Hard to pull out. <coughs> when you're doing fittings, watch out for the animals. Sometimes they'll, if they're not, they're just hanging up, <laughs> they'll just play it and wing right there. Or Bello got it right through the lip. <laughs> uh, so you gotta be very careful. Sometimes cats don't want you to pull out a hook. With Bello, I just I snipped off the uh, barb and pulled it through. Five minutes later, he didn't even act like he had a hook in his mouth. So it was really crazy. But I had to yell and get somebody down and hold him and do the little removal of the hook. So, last thing I want is he, my kitty cats to get hooked. <laughs> Cat, catfish. <laughs> One of my cats stepped on a hook once. He had to clip the barb off, which I did, yeah, and push it the rest of the way through. Yeah, that's what I had to do too. But it was through his lip. <laughs> just like a fish um, yeah but yeah you, you gotta watch out I mean I'm not used to having Evie down here to be honest she uh, she does not come down here too often this is Bellow's domain typically I have the two cats and a, a little dog Willow Willow never comes down here ever a little thing. My cats are much bigger than my dog. Uh, actually, the dog is my oldest daughter's, mostly. No, almost completely. So, but yeah, we're just putting these split rings on here and, and these little hooks. I'm going to use as many hooks as I can today. And, Wait for the order. Won't come till after New Year's. All the holidays. You never want to order something this time of year. Because you're not going to get it when you want it. <laughs> so what do you think? Beard's coming in. Beard's coming in. So, uh, another... By the time end of my vacation, this will be a nice, rich beard. Um, by the end of my vacation for sure so my beard comes in pretty quick it's been eight days already so it comes in pretty quick but thing is with silver hair it's hard to see the beard so typically it's like a blonde guy growing a beard I mean it's like what's the point nobody can see it no matter how much hair you got but gray silver is a little better than blonde when I was younger, I had brown hair, like my son. In my 20s, I started going gray. By the time my children were born, which I was 36, I was completely gray. And then all their friends in their elementary school, in my 40s, thought I was their grandfather. No, that was mine. I always just told people I had a trophy wife. She wanted to have kids, so I accommodated. <laughs> My wife has no problem being called a trophy wife. <laughs> oh, I like this design, too. This particular pattern, what I did is I, I went with a silver underbelly on this. A magenta transitional paint, you know, and then paint is sort of a blue-green transition paint up on the head. This is a really good looking little bait. More for stained water I think. It'll work really well for. Looks really good though. Turned out good. Hey Blinky Cooper! <laughs> so we're putting... Uh, how was your day? How was your morning? So I don't celebrate Christmas. So I always wish you guys the best of things. 
But, uh, anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. Cooper, what's your favorite thing you got today? I know your family celebrates Christmas. And Dinglerook. <laughs> Dinglerook. How you doing, bud? Share what you guys got today. I mean, that's kind of fun. It's always fun to share what you got today. Your favorite things. Yeah, uh, Cooper's age. He's a kid. Cooper, what are you, what, 12, I think? You know, something like that. And uh, I know what I would have got you, Coop. <laughs> Maybe when I see you, I'll give it to you. Because uh, you're coming in February. And I will bring you know, a signed copy of this. Oh, and because you're... Grandpa owns this this resort. Boom. Cooper's presents right there. Those are Cooper presents right there. We'll put those aside. That's for Coop. <laughs> well, you know me, man. I love giving gifts. <laughs> oh, I knew you would get that. Totally new. Fishing rod. See, that's just perfect for you, Coop. That is perfect for you. Oh my goodness, that's got to be exciting for you. You probably want to just go out and start using it today. What's the weather like down in San Diego? <laughs> it's probably a lot nicer. I don't know, it's nice air. A little cloudy. cloudy. <clears throat> but uh, usually we have a white Christmas. We got no snow on the ground. No snow on the ground right now. Lake's not frozen. Ah. That's okay. Next week I go fishing in the ocean. Well, in a marina. I don't want to pay to go out on the ocean. <laughs> oh, you're 14. Okay. Well, I don't know. You know, the older you get, the younger the world becomes. It's just the way it is. So, you know... What I think is a 15-year-old girl serving me a drink in a restaurant is actually a 22-year-old. So it's just the way it works out as you get older. The world becomes younger. And then, at a certain point, you just give up trying to figure out people's age. <laughs> you already know you're wrong. <laughs> that is so exciting. So what kind of rod did you get? What kind of rod? Tell us something about it. I mean, is it a spinning rod, bait casting rod, brand? Some of the details of it. I don't know. It's kind of fun. Let us share in your joy. Because I totally would have bought you a rod, too. Knowing you, totally. Would have got you a rod. <laughs> Especially bass fishing. You can't get too many rods when you're bass fishing. Ask me. <laughs> oh, that's a hard one. Come on. Get in there. You know, these are little split rings. See, it's a little split ring. Really hard to split it, put the hook in there, and run it through it. Especially at my age, when I shake and I can't see. <laughs> Hi and muddy, how are you guys? <laughs> Come on, Coop, you gotta share. Everybody wants to know what kind of rod you got today. <laughs> Everybody wants to know. Part of the joy of getting is sharing. <laughs> and you know, all of us are happy for you. Every one of us. Uh, it is just, I mean, you guys don't know, but this, this, this young man, he loves, he's been in my boat with me. He and I have ice fished together. We've done all sorts of fishing together. He is a 
avid, avid fisherman. Um, he's even been on my channel. Uh, look at the, I think it's the big tent one, ice fishing last year. Cooper came out and joined me, and he and I were fishing online uh, on, a, on my live, so you get to see Coop. Uh, fantastic family, too. His grandpa owns the resort, and he lives down in San Diego. But he, his whole family is just absolutely wonderful. I like them all. It's all for smaller fish, crappie and Well, yeah. Oh, it's a Mudson Savvy Rider. A Mudson Savvy Rider. I love crappie fishing. I have a crappie set up just for that. A Munson Savvy. I gotta look at it. I gotta look at it now. Is it uh, a travel rod so you can bring it with you? Oh my god, it is. That is so cool. You can actually travel with this one, can't you? That is a fantastic combo. What a really cool thing to get as a gift because you like traveling. And that is a really, really neat thing. I wouldn't have got you that. <laughs> I wouldn't have got you a big one. <laughs> one that doesn't travel. <laughs> I would have messed that one up. But what a neat gift. Oh my goodness. Now I know what to expect from you when you come up here in, in February. We're going to have so much fun. We really will. We're going to have a lot of fun. Be ice fishing, though. Be ice fishing. Probably won't use that one. <laughs> we'll wait for the summer for you to bring that up and, and use it. Um, but ice fishing, we get we, we use the little pole. You know, 24 inches. Very, very cool. That is really neat. That's a neat, neat pole. I've never seen one like that. <coughs> that is a very neat pole. And, you know, who doesn't love crappie fishing? You know, pan fishing is just a lot of fun. It takes a lot of skill, too. Because you gotta, you gotta be quick on the reflexes, which mine have slowed down. Um, so I miss a lot of crappie. But the Lake of the Woods actually had a lot of crappie this this year, and everybody was catching crappie. Um, I don't know what it was. All the rains, the you know, the lake filled up. I don't know, but something happened, and the crappie were just abundant this year. Yeah, you know I've caught one pumpkin seed sunfish in the lake, and uh, um, is that out of focus? I mean, I hate autofocus. I always say that. Let me make this manual focus. All right, camera control. Focus. Come on. Take that off and. Yeah. Move you down, hit that, hit that. See what it looks like on the uh, thing. I think I'm in focus now. Ah, come on, come on, come on. It's like 10 seconds behind me on the broadcast. Well, that looks better. It's not going to go out of focus anyway. I hear Evie. Evie's me on one. It's not stuck down here. I left the door open, I think. Like I said, I I work in the basement. It's cold down here. Basements are cold here in Oregon. But at least we have basements. Something that California doesn't have. If they do, it's just a pantry size. This is my basement. I can I could build another house down here. <laughs> well, Probably a full one or two bedroom down here, pretty easily. I built this little office here. And I'm thinking about 
to building another room so I can uh, uh, maybe do some soft bait making. Because I thought about rod building, but you might have to sell a rod for 200 bucks just to recoup. Um, and I don't think people pay that for me. But soft baits, they will pay five bucks. <laughs> and and I, li I live in trout country. So make some small finesse for trout and for, uh, for trout and for pan fishing. And uh, I can sell those. It'd be fun to have custom soft baits at the marina. So here we go. Yet another one, ready and packaged up. Oh! That's a pretty one. They really are very good looking. That's a good looking bait. Good looking bait. <laughs> I can probably do three more, maybe. So, I'm working on this. That's what I got. Three more. Yay. Although I've got, oh, you know what? We should, should do, get a nice fishing one done. Now this one, uh, this baby glows in the dark like a bright neon. Although it's green, it's not really yellowish green. Looks white, but this thing is so so bright. Um, and when you throw down a glow in the dark jig under the ice. It's big. It's great. So we're just going to put these, put a couple hooks on here. Here's really, I've put spinners on them before. We'll put two hooks on them. I do have some spinner ones, so give them a little more flash under the ice. That's all right. Maybe I'll catch two on one jig. <laughs> I've seen people do that. I have to find my ocean stuff, my sibikis and stuff like that out in the garage. Because I, uh, I will be doing some pier fishing. And uh, sibikis will work really well. So I know I've got a couple sabikis out there, and then some bigger weights and other stuff. Because I used to fish over in Ventura. Got to get a fishing license too this week for next week for the new year. This way. I'll be all legal. Ah. Always catch. You know what? I hope you guys appreciate the blood I put on these things. <laughs> Those little hooks are hard. And they're harder to pull out, too. Sometimes. Especially if they go past the barb. There's nothing to cut off, so you just gotta pull real hard. Pull them out. You just pull real hard. That's what you got to do. Now I'll put together a tackle box for next week. Small one. I don't think I'll need a big one. But, yep. Little itty bitty guy. Little itty bitty guy. Good little ice fishing jig. Ice fishing jig. Glow in the dark ice fishing jig. So, there you go. All packaged up. <laughs> uh, do this one. Yeah, it's a lot of. Let me get out there and fish. Thought about going to Lake of the Woods this week and uh, doing a little fishing. I mean, it's open water right now. I could just 
do some bank fishing. I already got the boat put up. So, do a little bank fishing maybe. I don't know. Let's see if it freezes up. Hope it does. I know the lake's down here aren't frozen. Thought about leaving the boat out and going to lower elevation lakes. Didn't. The boat's all put up for the season. Sometimes you feel blind. That's probably not the best day to do a broadcast. Everybody's so busy today with, I'm not a football game, but yeah, you know, I, uh, I got a gift on Friday from my uh, niece, my oldest niece. When I opened it, I started crying a lot for a while. When I was a child growing up, my Aunt Tina in Detroit, who was a saint, um, every Christmas she would send us an Italian pastry in a Christmas tin. And Aunt Tina, she she's one of the most giving, most generous people you'll ever run across. Um, she never married, never even dated from what I know, to take care of her brother, my Uncle Nick. Because he had a head wound in the war. And Uncle Nick was never the same after that and couldn't take care of himself. And uh, so Tina forewent a personal life to take care of her brother for the rest of his life, up to his death and up to her death. And uh, so that side of the family, Tina is my mom's sister. Uh, and mom was just as generous as Tina. Um, they run the mob, <laughs> the mafia in Detroit. They're the, Zer the Zerillis. If you look it up, Detroit Mafia, you will see the Zerilli family. They run the mob there. So I come from a mafia family. But I will tell you something. Coming from a mafia family, you would think they may have a lack of love but and giving and caring. But Tina and my mom put other people first. My mom put her children first before herself, which I guess all parents do. but. Mom in some extraordinary ways being a single parent. And Tina for her brother. So I get this gift on Friday from my niece. And uh, I open it. At first it was just a square piece of Tupperware. And I said, oh, I showed it to my wife. And I go, look at that. Jennifer made us something. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Isn't that nice? And uh, I peeled back the wax paper that was covering it. And under it, I just saw a corner. And I knew exactly what it was. It was the puff pastry that, uh, well, at least as good as Jennifer could make, mirrored Aunt Tina's. And I just started bawling. Because this time of year, you get very emotional even if you don't celebrate Christmas. Um, it's still an emotional time. And I just started crying. 
just remembered Mom. I remembered Aunt Tina. <clears throat> How amazing these individuals were. And so I, I had to call up Jennifer right away. And I'm just still crying. I'm just still sobbing. And I called Jennifer up and... In between my tears, I'm telling her how much I love her. I go, I, you know, because she had to be like 12 years old. Because she's like 47 now. But she had to be like 12 years old when Tina died. And uh, so she was telling me that one of the few memories that she has as a child was, were these tins that Aunt Tina would send. And she wanted to recreate that for us. And in between my sobbing and crying, I, 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 was, I was a mess. I mean, I might as well have watched The Notebook. But, you know, I was a mess after that movie. Um, <laughs> I've never... The closest that's ever happened to me was when my youngest daughter gave me a coffee mug with my mom's picture on it. Thing is, you know, one of the things I enjoy about fishing is it's all about memories creating memories this time of year because families don't get together very much anymore but everybody's got the day off today um, you spend time together and uh, you make memories hopefully good ones <laughs> although I come from a Sicilian household so if you're not yelling you ain't talking <laughs> Hey, awesome. Hey, Kenny. Well, you can't go wrong with smallmouth at Lake of the Woods. Smallmouth's the best fighting fish at the lake. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't try to catch trout. But trout are stupid. They hit these things all day long. You know, I'll throw this out there. I'll catch trout all day long. I'll catch bass. But this is a great smallmouth lure. Really good smallmouth lure. I'll catch largemouth, too. But it all depends where I'm fishing. To the right of the marina is smallmouth heaven. So that's where you're going to catch all the smallies. Most of them. 80% of them are going to be caught there. And uh, along that shoreline up to um, um, Aspen. So. But yeah, it's just, this time, it, it, this, I get very emotional. Especially with, you know, what my brain's chemistry has changed after the strokes so and then my blood clots they uh changed my chemistry a bit and i got more emotional now i cry at everything <laughs> except when i put a hook in me i cannot cry when i put a hook in me it's emotional stuff you know, it's like the notebook never watch that movie ever do not watch the notebook you're heartless. You don't cry at the end of that movie. <coughs> One more. One more hook. I'm running out of hooks. But, uh, yeah, my family, as loud, obnoxious, boisterous as we are, and I am the quiet one of the family, my sisters can outvoice me and my brother. More so than anybody else on earth. He doesn't need a telephone. Um, yeah, he, it's just... Our family was uh, poor. Very poor. But... Uh, they loved each other. And... Uh, yeah, we take care of each other. So families do, right? But when I opened that gift, all of a sudden, all this uh, emotion hit me. It just hit me like I've never been hit before. It was something else. You guys would have been embarrassed for me. <laughs> My wife was like, what's going on? Like, oh, you don't understand, and I'm showing her this little 
itty bitty Tupperware container. <laughs> That was a mess. <laughs> I explained it to my son. He seemed to be very empathetic. He was watching his dad cry. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I think as I gotten older, definitely gotten softer. <laughs> Wild. I know. You guys would have laughed at me. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't have understood my emotional response to a pastry. <laughs> I had no idea pastries can be so emotional. <laughs> None. <laughs> But, you know, I had probably I had a great childhood. I mean, even though we were poor, being evicted all the time, we didn't know we were going to live. I can still tell you I had a great childhood. Because I had a mother who was a survivor. And she would, she... She never badmouthed my father, ever. Shoulda. My dad was a jerk. He was a jerk. A womanizer. A philanderer. Just a jerk. And, uh... He didn't care about this family at all. So, it's just, yep, mom never stopped loving me. I'm out of hooks until my order comes in after New Year's. But we've got uh, quite a few put together here. Two, four, six, eight of them done. We'll hang this guy back up. So, I mean, it's just a... You gotta laugh and enjoy the, the family. You gotta enjoy the family. <sighs> because you never know. We died very young in my family. Both my grand... All my grandparents, all four of them died before I was born. My parents died before my children were born. I've cheated death seven times in nine years. So I should be dead. We're just fortunate, I guess. I'm just tougher than they are. <laughs> oh my goodness. I remember last, remember last year I was doing that live on Lake of the Woods right after the thaw and flipped my kayak and all of a sudden pff, lost the video. 40 minutes in that freezing water. I really, I was dying. I was 10 more minutes in the water, I would have been dead. Um, that was the only one that was really my fault. The rest of them were not my fault broke my sternum last year. That wasn't my fault. Although, the person driving the boat will say that it was, but it wasn't. It was that person. So, but before that, it was just health problems. Kind of. <laughs> you would think all my mishaps, when I was a little kid, about five years old, I drowned in the lake. And uh, they resuscitated me on the shore. The lifeguard, fortunately, dove in and got me. And uh, I've used up my nine lives. They're all used up. I don't think I have any of them left. So if I'm a cat, I gotta be careful. But uh, it's a. Uh, 
I had a great childhood. Yeah, I wrote this other book. Uh, because after my mom died, I didn't want my kids to not know who I was. Because we die young. We just die young. And one of the reasons I didn't want to have kids is because I was afraid they'd grow up without a father like I did. And I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Uh, uh, having a, uh, uh, a father is not necessary. But I always wanted one. Because I, mean, I grew up fine with just a mom. But fathers, you're different. And because of the contrast, you, you, you have other lessons. So after my mom died, I, uh, I wrote an autobiography. So if indeed I did die, I could leave behind stories of my childhood and growing up. And so this book was written, Finding Paradise. Um, and uh, it was me horseback riding in Breckenridge, Colorado. See how much thinner I was? Gained weight when I, mean, I got really sick. Me surfing. There's my custom surfboard. Nice surfboard. And, uh, oh, there's my mom. There's mom. <laughs> she was a bartender seven nights a week. That was in a place called the Scoreboard. So I always wore, like, referee outfits. The scoreboard was right next door to Uncle Tom's Toys. Toy store. She worked there during the day. And, um, Beth, look. It's not family day, right? There's my two sisters, much older than my little brother and I, with my mom. And so this book is uh, my story of growing up. That's me when I was a little kid. My son looks just like me. So, um, and uh, I don't know. Look at the, oh, okay. So I want you to know this was the 70s. We all wanted to look like Peter Frampton back then. So I had really long hair. Oh, that's, that's me. Look at all that hair. See, we had a lot of hair back then. Tons of hair back then. I had a lot of hair. Look at this. My mom, so proud of me for earning an award. I was a commander of uh, Sons of the American Legion, and, and uh, anyway, I was, this is a, uh, so it's a life story. See, my mom was a mafia street brat, and uh, she, she was in street gangs growing up. She never graduated seventh grade. Great stories, but I never heard a fraction of them. And so after she died, um, I kind of wish I had heard more of those stories. But mom had gotten into a car accident and had retrograde amnesia. So she literally had forgotten a lot of those stories. And, uh, yeah, she was a survivor. I mean, car crash would have killed her, but it didn't. But it did wipe out her memory pretty good. Um, so I left this... And when my youngest daughter was seven, she watched me die and when I went on life support. And uh, I was happy that I wrote this already because she would barely remember who I was uh, if I had passed away that week. Uh, but she would have a testimony of who her father was. And I wish all parents would do something like this you know, put down a, a journal of their childhood. Uh, what, some of the lessons that they've learned and uh, a little bit of wisdom. Gosh, I was so skinny. Look at that. Now I'm, I'm I, they put me on the biggest horse. It was a tank, had, had digestive issues. 
this, I was glad I wasn't on the horse behind me because this horse farted all the way through the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> Nobody wanted to be behind me. What was it? What? I kept saying, excuse the horse for its farting. <laughs> Excuse him. I forgot the horse's name. That was a long time ago. Well, actually, that was probably... 2005, 2000. So that's probably 2008. So that's only 15 years ago. That's 15 years ago. My, oh my, have I changed. In 15 years. That was probably about 20 years ago. You know, my surfboard. I uh, love surfing. Love surfing. In fact, the entire book is written on a surf, you know, about, takes place on a surf day. And I sort of have uh, 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 environmental stuff that triggers stuff. So kind of a cool little story anyway, because I've written it like a story. But at the same time, all these experiences surface. So it's actually kind of a neat write. Um, really fun to do, actually. So, anyway, I hope you guys are having fun with your family. Watch a football game. Don't drink too much and drive, please. And uh, make good memories with your family today. Tell your parents you love them. That's probably... Tell everybody you love them. Because you might miss them one day. Well, you will. I know I miss mine. In my faith, we believe in a resurrection. And uh, the happiest point in my life will be when I meet my mother again. And she can meet her children, her grandchildren. That will be according to my beliefs, a future day that will be better than all other days, no matter how good they were. Oh, she laughed so loud. She had a laugh. You could hear Phyllis Rufino in the parking lot of the bar because she, she had the best laugh. And people, you know, crazy thing is I laugh a lot. And people know me because of my laugh. People can find me in a store because of my laugh. Mom and I are very much very similar. My mother and I. Um, so, I wish you guys the best day. And uh, tell your family you love them. And I will see you guys probably later this week. But definitely I'll be doing some live over on the, um, the piers uh, next week. You know, over in Newport. So I probably won't catch nothing because, you know, I'm a freshwater fisherman. But you never know. I'm going to throw a sabiki down there with some shrimp. I'll be pulling something up, right? I have a bunch of seals right outside our, our window. So they give you earplugs <laughs> in the room. Because <laughs> the seals, evidently, they don't sleep. So <laughs> anyway, you guys take care. I'll see you guys later. Oh, you do it. Shut up and feel.